Hello, Agnes. Hello, Sonia. Um, how are you doing? I'm very well. How are you today? I'm good, too. I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you again. The last time we had a conversation, it was really, really nice. I've listened to that many times just to sort of um, revisit some of the things we chatted about. Yeah. Uh, you know, some things, it's, it's interesting. We can let um, certain information, fine. We can absorb it and we can move on with our lives. But when it comes to these sticky topics, it's like we have to keep going yes. back and revisiting the same lessons. And um, so it, it, that was a wonderful convo. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good conversation. It was a good conversation. Lots of good questions that day. Right. And I'm hoping I can replicate some of that today because <clears throat> I, I realized as, you know, I, I, the more I know about this topic, when it comes, I'm talking about manifestation and the laws of the universe in general. Yeah. Um, the more, when I observe things around me, I'm looking at it with the critical, more of a critical eye. Right. And I, when I see successful people who are doing, living the lives that I want to live, I, I want to know how they achieve that when it comes to like their mental uh, prowess, when it comes to like how they manifested things. So one thing I wanted to chat with you about right, is people's energies. Mm -hmm. you know, in, this, in this world, um, I mean, I think we keep it clean. Like your channel keeps it pretty clean with Neville Goddard and Abraham Hicks, but there's a lot of people who talk about energy and healing energies and uh, Reiki and all this stuff. So clearly energy when we're all energy, we're vibrating at different energies and whatnot frequencies, um, is very important. I was wondering, what are your thoughts about how people spend their energy when they split their energies? So a lot of people now, obviously, we have 17 different handheld devices mm. that we're on at different times. <clears throat> and, you know, we, and a lot of worry goes into those handheld devices. Oh my God, they didn't text me back. <clears throat> yeah me back um oh my god look at all the social media like we have this little thing and our hearts and souls are seem to be in this in mm. like our, right how do you think that affects people's manifestations when you know they are splitting their energies with all the different technology and what do you think you know are some good practices to sort of focus our energies more effectively so that you know we are in a positive space and we are attracting good things to us. Good question. I think we are very much in a distraction environment all the time. And this dissatisfaction drives the feeling of dissatisfaction, I think, is constantly driving us to, you know, pick up the phone, pick up the iPad, look at Facebook, look at Twitter, use overuse, you know, WhatsApp, whatever it is. And when you don't have the life that you want to have, it's like you're constantly looking at other people's lives or getting involved in other people's lives. And it often has a negative effect where you think, oh, well, I haven't got that or I'm not good enough or I must be doing something wrong. So you use it as a way to beat yourself up because you compare yourself to other people. Whereas I think there was a guy called Dan Dapani and he talked about concentration and he said it so simply that, you know, we get that much time every day. Everybody gets the same amount of time and it's what are you going to use that time for? So when you take your sleep out and then you take out, you know, if you go to work, then what time have you got left? And it's saying to yourself, okay, well, if I want to, really enjoy and achieve certain things that are meaningful to me i need to get off facebook i need to get off instagram or whatever not saying you don't go on it i mean if that means something to you you know you can do it but instead of living through other people's lives i think putting energy into your own life and reading or listening to youtubes or learning a course or watching movies that you know you really love the topic of or walking and spending time in nature or dancing or bike riding whatever it is everybody's got a long list of things that they love to do but it's putting the energy into those things rather than you know i think spending time on social media really is you're not concentrating on your own life you go right. and the thing is as soon as you go onto one social media platform there's always these things like news feeds and things that pop up and you go down that rabbit hole and then down that rabbit hole and then two hours have gone by and what have you really done right so 
I think pulling ourselves away from that is a good way to conserve energy because I think I, I personally hear a lot of people say I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted. Yes. I hear all the yes. time. Yes. It's like you're exhausted but you're draining your energy, wasting time, trolling right. on social media for hours on end. Um, I think, <laughs> You know, trolling away, trolling away. Yeah, Tro trolling away, looking at, and and we've talked about this subject before. What a specific person's doing. This is where people seem to troll around a lot. No, I know. Thinking that they're finding stuff out, but in the end, you know, it does you a lot of damage because you see certain things and then you interpret them often incorrectly, and then you use that to beat yourself emotionally, and it puts you right. in a bad bad feeling place. So. You know, you've got to protect your emotional state as best you can, I think. Yes. When you can and use your time wisely because you never get time back. It's the most valuable commodity, I think. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's what we should be afraid of when it comes to aging. It's not the, yeah. oh my God, I'm getting too old or something. It's more like every second counts. You it know? does. Um, but you're, that's so interesting that you say that, that people are exhausted. Because you would think that now with all the technological advancements that life would be easier, you know, but mm. it's so strange. We're not happier. I don't think that 2019 wow. people are happier than a hundred years ago. I think mm. we have the same problems, the same emotional problems, and it's more complicated now. You know, we have mm. so many factors that we split our energies. Mm. Uh, I have to say personally, uh, I used to be exhausted all the time and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done anything all day. Why was I so exhausted all the time? Like mm. literally for me to get up and clean my room or do something would, would be, would feel like the biggest chore. And I realized it's, and I used to want, everybody used to wonder, what are you doing all day that you're exhausted? But it's because I'm, I was splitting my energies and like my emotional energies on to things that, um, were draining me so much. Mm. I mean, it, it, and, and it made it so that like my life the results of my life were confusing. I'd be like, what's going on? I'm not doing anything, but and everywhere I go, like I'm getting some strange reactions from people. Like it was, it was very odd. Mm. Now that I've been doing some of that self love work, I have such easy energy to work out, easy energy to play my guitar, um, to do things that make me happy. And it's weird because before I learned about this stuff, I'd be like, why does it matter if I work out? I'm not going to be perfect anyways. Like, you know, like, like that toxic, uh, situation and I was like, no. If you put your mentality into something excite that makes you happy, mm. um, and you're engaging with your imagination during that activity, like you never know what you're manifesting at that time. Like, okay, so I used to have real fears around um, music. I love music, love music, but I always felt not good enough, you know, to play music. To, I just never felt good enough in the first place. So anything I wanted to do never um, materialized. I would just beat myself up to the point where I couldn't even do the things I love. Yeah. So I said, okay, like I, first I, I dealt with myself. I did a lot of meditations and everything. And now when I play guitar, it's like, I do it for fun and it's opening up doors already. I, I, I used to be sad because I would be like, oh man, I really want to play music, but I'm never, I'm never going to be good enough to be able to play in front of people. Like it would be all this thoughts, but now that I'm actually putting my energy into it, I'm noticing doors opening. You know, I have friends that are into music that are like, messaging me and I have people that um like little avenues on that I notice that are popping up like crazy so at first it's hard I just want to say that first it's hard to to make that step to like say no you know what I am not gonna let you know my depression suck out my energies because mm. you're like but then when you do it just a little at a time it builds up and and it's it's crazy how like if you spend an hour playing your guitar, you're not just learning guitar skills. You're actually engaging your imagination. You're calming yourself down. You're um, being happy and you're, you're feeling good about yourself. That is, and that has, that, that's the beautiful thing about it, you know, about like conserving your energy for things that you love. It's not just affecting that particular task. Yeah. It's, it's, it's helping you for, for so many things. So I'm glad you clarified some of that. So you know, I, I, fi I find that there's a lot of people with specific person desires, I mean, online, where they're in a really, really bad emotional state. And, you know, you almost want to be like, okay, you can get your specific person, but you are a mess right now. I mean, I, I, I'm not a coach for a reason. I can't tell people they're messes. That's not nice. But still, it's like, okay, you are stressing. You know, you are hitting them up a hundred times a day. Like, that's not normal, mm, right? Mm. So, 
and you can tell that it's they don't like it they're not being like they're not doing that on purpose they're just they believe the love is over there as you say right mm. so the first so i i'm in a really good place right now i'm probably like a six or seven out of ten and i was a two out of ten for a long time yeah i'm um, in terms of emotional state but what would you say to the people that are like a two out of ten where they're like listen right now my 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 life's a disaster um i my, my man left me my work's shit and i'm overweight and i have a lot going on and i you know i can't even imagine how my life could be better what would be like two or three things that could help them get to a better state and you know, conserve their energy for good manifesting. Well, I, I, I think conserving your energy, I think meditation I find is one of the best things because you actually sit, you think about what you're doing and then you use your breathing and you surrender, you let go you calm down, you get out of that over-revved state that we all get into when we're doing too much, too busy, too much technology, too much stimulation, not enough time to rest, not enough time to relax. So I find meditation where you shut off all the senses because using social media, being around people, being at work, traveling back and forth, you're just bombarded all the time visually, your audio, everything. So if you can totally disconnect and disengage from all the senses for the time that you sit in meditation, it's a recharge. And I think that's a great way to conserve your energy and build your resource of energy back up. And also, I think, just go to bed. Like, some people just are exhausted because they just don't sleep enough. You know, they've got dark circles under their eyes. They're pale. They look, they're yawning. They're dragging themselves around. They look like they're a bit sick looking. You just, yeah. well, the body, physical body needs rest. It needs sleep. And we're, we're overdoing so much stuff that the body... It's like you age your own self by doing too much and you don't right. recharge the battery pack. So I find sleep and meditation pretty much the top two. Got you. And you know what? You're right. Like, even though that is, that seems to be the answer for everything. You're right. That is that sort of that contemplation where you can kind of take it a step back. Mm. The way to go. Cause I, I mean, you can tell by just talking to me that I am a high energy person. You know, I have a lot <laughs> going on. I have a lot to say and yep. everything, right? But that can go really awry if you don't, you don't, you don't take the time to rest. Mm. And so, I mean, I will, I will say like the, the reason that energy is a topic that I'm really excited about and I'm exploring like fun modalities when it comes to energy healing and all that stuff is because I can feel like mm. I have a pit in my belly, constantly stressed or like there's something going on there. Then I have like, problems here like you know like the throat chakra is freaking out or whatever <laughs> and, <I'm, laughs> and it's like I really <laughs> I really have a lot of energy problems like or like um you know I need to calm down and I think a lot of people have that either they're too low because something's blocking them yeah you know, something that has happened yeah. or they're all over the place and I really see that in their lives you know I can see the chaos around certain people or like the sort of mm. dead energy around some people and, and I really think if people take your advice to do the self-love meditations. Um, it doesn't pay dividends right away. So mm. we, they don't want to do it. You know, they're getting something out of this, what they're doing. So it's kind of hard to like, be like, okay, let's not, let's just surrender. Yeah. But I have to say, I think part of the reason I want to have these conversations with, with you is because I am in the middle of the t like right now. And I really want to tell people to just surrender, try it because it's working for people. If you look at the success stories, the basic things that you teach are working for people and it's getting them relief. Like why, you know, it's amazing. So, um, that's why I really want to chat is, is, you know, I've been in really dark and little places, but I see a lot of people as well. You know, I, 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 I've talked to a lot of women who are in this, who are beautiful and amazing and they're just the whole specific person thing is really draining them. I mean, yeah. I don't know how you can, Sometimes I, 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 I like will give you like a loving thought at night because after watching your videos, I'm like, that's a lot of emotional energy that you are taking on. Mm. I don't know how you keep yourself clear, but um, actually, yeah, like a side question for that would be, you know, as, a, as somebody that maybe talks to five to six people who are heartbroken or have a lot of yeah. problems, 
how do you like to re rest and recharge so you're not carrying that around? Well, I think in the beginning I did it badly because my business started getting more and more uh, clients and I was taking everybody, you know, as quickly as I could. And in the end, I overloaded myself. So now I have a limit that I take per day. And when that limit is reached, I, I shuffle people to the next day, the day after that. So now it's often booked a week in advance because I only take so many because I want to make sure that I maintain my own self. I need to go for a walk every day. I need to make sure I cook properly, that I eat, that I drink lots of water, that I exercise, that I do my own meditation. So yes. it's like to be able to do this work, I can't just be, you know, putting in like six people a day and six hours a day face to face, then the email coaching on top of it, then the YouTubing on top of it, then the behind the, it's like, mm -hmm. that's not self care. That's actually self abuse. So it mm -hmm. really has been making decisions along the way to say, okay, now I know my limit, you know, five a day is too many, four a day is too many, three is good. And then the email coaching on top of it and then the YouTubing Perfect. and making sure two days off a week when I'm in a routine where I'm settled, you know, two days off a week where I don't check really what's going on and I watch movies right. and I don't give to anybody for two days. So, right. you know, but I've learned that the hard way because I did too much and then I ended up hitting the wall and burning out a little bit. So I thought, well, right. And technology is very draining. Being on a computer all day, I find I'm not a huge computer person. I use it for work and I enjoy it, but I'm not someone that can sit at a desk all day. And so I need to go out in nature, breathe fresh air, be amongst the trees, the grass, and that recharges. So that's another recharge is just being around nature and, and right. being that. I think that's really important. So, but I think you work out your own, you know, your own level. I mean, some people can probably do a lot more than I do, but I know for me, I'm not, um, yeah. I, don't, I don't have great stamina. I've never had it. Even in my twenties, I never had good stamina. So I know that about myself and I go, okay, well you just do the turtle wins the race. You do a little bit each day and yeah. then. That's I like it. that too. Yeah. I'm like that too. I like to do a little at a time. I don't like yeah. to overlook myself. Yeah. But you're interesting because you take on the, the sort of deep core issues that, that people come to come to you, you know, like specific person is mm. it's 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 like, oh, self worth to the core, to the max. It is. That's the it is. Yeah. You know, whereas like I'm not saying wealth wealth isn't like people who are concerned about that, but you take on those type of topics that are like yeah. So you need that recharge. Like I wouldn't, mm. you know, if I'm, if I'm your friend or your sister or something like that, I'd be like, you got to take three, uh, no more because people are coming to you with their heart and soul and you want to be able to give them your best. Mm. And you want to be able to, and that's actually really good advice for every, everyone where you take what you can yeah. and um, have a, a fun life. Now, one thing that I've always wanted to ask you, I'm jumping around a lot, but that's all right. You mentioned a lot that about when you're 20s, you, yeah. you had a tumor and yeah. um, you read, you can heal your life and you were able to cure that tumor. And that was probably your first foray into the idea that our thoughts create our reality or yeah. our, you know, have an impact on our reality. Yeah. How long do you think it took you to really have faith in that? Because I think a lot of us are at the stage where we have to keep getting reassurance that this is actually true. You know, it's yeah. not like <laughs> as all these studies that, um, that prove that reality. In fact, if you look into it, th there's actually a lot of people that deny this completely. Right. Yeah. So, um, and in a way that's kind of is shitty for people. Sorry, I swear. Um, uh, that you don't have the internet because we're spending all this time Googling it and instead of actually practicing it. Right. Yes. Um, but I was going to ask you how long, when you first started learning about these things, did it take for you to get faith? And like, what did you do when your faith in, your power on the universe. Mm. When it was shaken, did you say? Like if you ever got, yeah, like if you ever had that ever happen where you were like, what? I prayed for this for so long and it, it didn't work like that. Or yeah. um, like, like what, how has your relationship been with the belief that, you know, our thoughts create the world around mm. us? Good question. Well, I think when that happened in my 20s, it, it was 
the first opportunity to see if it worked. It was like I was trying to prove it to myself, really. Can I dissolve, you know, this thing I've created, which is a tumour? So I thought, well, okay, now you get to see if your reading is now going to be transferred into application. Are you going to apply it? So I think you, you go through, no matter what it is, whether it's a health condition like it was in that case for me or a relationship with a specific person or you're in a huge amount of debt and you're drowning and you, you know, you're about to be kicked out of your house, whatever, there come these points in life where you go, okay, this is it. I'm either going to fork in the road this way where I totally collapse and cause myself major anxiety and end up, you know, having to pull the plug and, and I can't work because I've had a mental breakdown or I'm going to go the other way. Whereas I've got all this knowledge. Let me really spend some time every day applying it the best I can. So those forks in the road is really where you're proving to yourself whether what you've read is true. You're not really proving it to anybody, you know? Right. And that's why with law of attraction, people go law of attraction, law of attraction, law of attraction. But really it's about you at a deeper level, learning to trust yourself and trusting life. That's what you're really working on because you're dealing right. with being anxious in the world all the time, just full of anxiety, full of fear, full of panic, full of, am I good enough? Full of all this stuff that you just rot yourself from the inside out with. So that's what I think you're really working on is just having a calmer mind and therefore calmer emotions and then just being comfortable in the world. Right. Yes. And, and uh, that's so amazing that you said that because you're right. People hear about the law of attraction. They get all riled up about the nitty gritty of what it means and science mm. and theta waves and all this stuff. And it's like, <laughs> that's, it's cool. It's totally yeah. cool. You yeah. want to have a simple mindset because you don't want to be listening to everything anyone says and trying mm. to sell you. However, yeah. it's about you and trusting yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And trusting that life has your back and mm. life loves you and the universe loves you, which I don't think we think that way. We think we're in a world now, a lot of us yeah. think we're in a world now that's against us. So yes. we're, against us. Yeah. We're, sin, we're bad people and yeah. we like, we're on this planet to like suffer. And I, actually I, I never considered that for a long time. I didn't consider that that's preposterous. Mm. Why the hell? Would that be the case? I mean, yeah. maybe there are lessons we need to learn, but why would we be born into a world just to suffer? Like, I mean, unfortunately there are, I mean, I'm not going to get into deep, but there are places where people do suffer. And that's, that's where, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? But then, um, it is nice to know that we have the power to be able to change that. Mm. And, you know, people can do, people drive cars all the time without knowing like, the, you know, the idea of the thermodynamics and how fuel works. But when it comes yeah. to this, I think people really want to understand the mechanics because they want, mm. it's avoiding doing the work. It's avoiding wanting to trust yourself. It's get, trying to get reassurance that this does work. But mm. um, that's why I really like your success stories. Anyas is like, anytime I you know, feel a little doubtful, there's a few channels I like to go to because mm. it's real people. Yeah. It's real struggles. It's not, it's not like those perfect superhuman looking people. Sometimes you see on law of attraction. I'm like, I don't relate <laughs> to people at all. It's more like, listen, I, was with this guy, we broke up. Then he did, all, he said all the things about the whispering technique. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it works. It works. I, yeah. it, you know, it, isn't, it won't work for me the same way it will for anyone else. Mm. Um, and I kind of, I really want to say this. It's like, imagine we are all different computer programs, right? There's different codes. Um, we are all so programmed differently. We have different beliefs, different backgrounds, different genetics, everything. Mm. So the same technique is like putting in a line of code or putting in, Mm. some command and it's something different is going to come out every person yeah. yes the tech work better for her because it aligns with her beliefs better but just because you know i have a different programming my 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 results would be could be different but that doesn't mean the technique's the problem it's like you're just engaging with the technique to see how it works for you oh. you know yeah um, and i find i i really like that about uh your web your your um youtube because the couple of couple of um meditations I've done about receiving a text or whatever has never worked for me. Yeah. But it's, no, what is the other one? Whispering technique has not, not worked for me. Yeah. Uh, that's totally fine. But it's just interesting when people, when it does work and I'm like, I want to get there one day where it's like, I can, I want to see that type of, you know, manifestation. Yeah. happen. But even if it doesn't like, that doesn't make me doubt it. In fact, if other people have success with it, mm. it makes me excited. 
It might not yeah. work for me, fine, but it makes me excited. Um, okay, so if you had, you know, like, uh, let's say somebody has been in a relationship on and off for quite some time. Yeah. And, you know, they are in a pl- place now where there's been a lot of tough things said, uh, you know, in, the, in, in our memories, there's a lot of drama and drama, right? Um, and, you know, they're off again. And they're not really low place. I know your a lot of your advice is on self love and things like you know to to be able to get that back to you. How um how do you think that like when it comes to like no contact kind of t- t- cutting that energy cord because that's what I want to do is like I want to try to cut the energy cords between me and people that have hurt me right or like yeah. me and that have hurt me. What are good ways to sort of disengage um from some negative things that have happened to sort of build a new path because sometimes I don't know if you probably notice this even with your success stories where they break up yes they're back together but the same patterns it's like the grooves are formed so the same patterns keep happening so how do we do it so that we're starting from fresh if we've had a lot of on and off with people well I think it's really understanding the everyone's you pushed out first because when you're still looking for uh, just this thing of I want and I'm not saying you've mentioned this now, but I do hear this a lot. I want this person to apologize to me or I'm still really hurt. And until they fix that, then I can't. And it's like, well, if you're making those comments, you don't understand the whole concept of everyone's you pushed out. And what did you do to create <clears throat> this situation in the state that it's, that it was in and that you're still keeping it alive whether it's a month later, six months later, or six years later, you're still going over it from the same vantage point. So you've got to, I think, shift your whole view of why that happened to you for, for the, the first point of understanding. Why did that happen to me? What was I doing? What was I, you know, was yeah. it, was I trying to get love and then I was disrespected and my neediness push that person to treat me badly because I, I kept over contacting, over contacting, over contacting. They kept getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And one day they just blew and they got really yeah. angry. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think you got to look at rather than looking for the why, you know, how do I clear the hurt? I think it's if you can say to yourself, how can I understand this a bit better as to why I was in a situation where that happened to me? Mm. Because mm. I, I hear a lot, Sonia, where people say that person's just really stubborn and they, they're, they've got a fear of commitment. And I think, hang on a minute. No, 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 no. There's a lot more to this than meets the eye. If someone is afraid of commitment in your eyes and if someone's stubborn in your eyes, there's a good chance you've pushed too hard. You've tried to control and manipulate and try to get your own way. And that's why you got that from that person. doesn't mean it's who they are. It means that that's what they showed you about themselves because you were relentless in trying to get from them. Right. That's true. And um, as soon as you said that, I pictured my whole last relationship, you know, I'm like, yeah, I definitely did that. And it's funny because I, I never did it verbally, but in my head, I was doing it all day long. Mm. I, I'd be like, why is he doing this? Like, when we're together, yeah. I would be like, yeah. why is he not doing this? And it's like, it's actually kind of crazy. I, I, I look back, see, okay, there's a little bit about my SP and maybe people can relate. I, me and him broke up in June and um, I did all the self-love meditations in the world. I did all the ones on your channel and guess what? It's, it went like a second, couple of dates here and there, like, and then it went zero, zilch, right? Okay. And I, I could definitely let myself get depressed about this, but I have to admit the fact that the six months or seven months, it was a very short relationship that we were together. Most of the time I was thinking negatively about it. So yeah. I need to let that run its course. You know, I need to let the, the things that I did or it felt just, you know, let it just dissipate. Yeah. I don't know how to cure them. And I don't, I can't put my energy right now on, on just this relationship. But I have to be like, you know what, it makes sense that right now he's uh, pulling away or is a little bit turned off. I mean, it makes sense. I was think- doing a lot of manifesting at that time. Mm. You know, I, we put our heart and soul into like our relationships. And so, and when we think the scary thoughts about people cheating, it's like a very super 
super powered manifestation. I mean, put that, if you imagine like if we put our, our energy that we put into negative visualizations about our partners into positive things, we would be yeah. like, yeah, we would be, but we do. And it's, it's, um, so anyways, I really relate to that where it's like, um, we need to give them some space. And I think, unfortunately, most girls I know, most women I know are saying that men don't like to commit. Mm. They're very stern and they're, men are trash. I hear that all the time. And I'm like, I wish I couldn't, I wish I could unhear that. I wish I could yes. delete that. Yeah. My brain I don't want to believe that. No. But it's hard because I think, mm. I think right now we're in a, we're in a really scary place when it comes to relationships. I think some positives are there where people don't want to stay in relationships because they're toxic and that's great. But there's also this thing where like men and women are pitted against each other a lot. You know, you probably see that. Um, where there's like a lot of stereotyping and I just, I think, yeah. you, do you do this thing where you sort of avoid what's going on in the news and what's going on in like general trends? Yeah. <laughs> it's not helpful, right? To like engage with the world like that because. Well, I, I just find I'm not that interested in terms of like, obviously there's some things like that are, you know, news events that are where things are happening in the world and you need to know a bit about it. But in terms of knowing about celebrities or knowing about, you know, <laughs> things that I'd rather put my energies into my own life and create my own things. I don't need to be involved in what they're doing in their lives. I, I, it's just, a, it just doesn't interest me. I, I, I love that. You know, um, I, I think that some, I like to listen to you and like, cause I think we, um, what you say about liking to sleep in, like to conserve your energy and like yeah. the way you are, I really want like to emulate those. Uh, but you also mentioned recently that you notice that people who do 500 to a thousand affirmations. Yeah. Um, that was really cool to hear because you know, you hear all this advice, but it's like, how, how do I apply that effectively? Mm, what, mm. 10, 10 affirmations a day, like in the morning and the night with the rose quartz crystal and like looking <laughs> in, my, in my freaking <laughs> mirror, like, what do I do? What's the best way? But yeah. now I, I think 500 is a good place to start. And so I was wondering for you, your personal practice, let's say you want to manifest something. Mm. Um, how, how would you go about it? Like, do you like to do affirmations even to this day, like every single day for your SP? How do you like to do like, what's your practice like on a daily basis when it comes to like manifesting and maintaining? Well, I find I don't really like waking up quickly. So I just lay in bed and I might, I'll do a meditation, whether it's the whole Pono Pono or I'll just put on some music and then I'll, just do like some affirmations over the top of the music. I usually do that for 45 minutes in the morning. Wow. Like maybe an hour. It depends on how long I feel like laying there really. And, and all, so I good. Yeah. I mean, I don't usually book anyone in before 10 a.m. So I usually wake up at, I don't know, 8.30, 9 a.m. when I'm in the time zone that I'm in. And then, so I'll do that. And then it's like, okay, let's do a bit of work. And then, you know, that I need a break. So I'll go for a walk in the middle of the day. I'll take my little counter with me. I'll do, you can do pretty much 500 affirmations in 20 to 30 minutes. Because mm. if you're doing the I am's, like I am loved, I am wanted, I am wealthy, I am healthy. It's only three words. It, it's literally, you know, two seconds per affirmation. It's pretty quick. So, yes, yes. you know, you, so you do, I do those. And I'll do them on all different subjects. I'll do them on, um, you know, the ones for me, the ones for the things I want to manifest. And then, yeah, I'll usually break them in blocks of about 100. So I'll do one affirmation for 100, one affirmation for 100. I can see it on the counter what I'm up to. And then, yeah, yeah, it's very systematic and very the mechan mechanical. Like it's, you know. Yeah. And I don't worry about if I'm feeling every affirmation or if I feel. Oh, I was going to ask you. Yeah. I was going to ask you because it feels so fake sometimes. I am loved. You're like, what yeah. does this word even mean anymore? <laughs> but yeah, no, that, but that's really interesting. I'm glad you said that because yeah. um, I would say people want to do practice self-love, but they don't know how to, how to incorporate it in their lives. They're like, okay, what do I do? I mean, I guess I could say affirmations, but it doesn't feel very inspired. Am I doing this the right way? Yeah. This is the one, get up in the morning for 40 minutes, put some beautiful music on. Yeah, and do affirmations and have a counter. 
That's yeah. really interesting. Just use the little counter and that way you actually know, okay, I've done five. It's a bit like when you go to the gym and you know you've done like 10 reps of whatever. You don't go, I'm not really sure how many I've done. You know. So this is the same. It's like a mental fitness and you really know how many you've done and you really keep track. And mm. then, you know, I mean, I was out today and I think I did like 1,100. I went out food shopping, came back and I walked there, walked Love back it. and it was like was no i mean it's just a time where your head wanders around and thinks about crap anyway so you might as well do something yes. positive with it yes oh so my it's, goodness it's effortless yeah. and then it's like okay a bit more work and then it's it's really okay i'm gonna log off i'm gonna listen to my own youtubes i'm gonna read a bit of a book i'm gonna watch a movie i'm gonna cook i've you know i bought some really good organic food today or something i might cook a meal so it's just constantly going through the day going, I'm looking after my physical self, I'm looking after my mental self, and that takes care of the emotional self. Love it. So Love it's it. just, yeah, it's a very simple routine. Um, I don't, it's not complicated, and it's pretty much been the same for a long time. But it's the, some days you just feel better than other days. You know, you're able to just get into a much better mental state other days you know things are affecting you and you don't do it as well and but that's okay it's just that's life okay. yeah that's okay that's right um it's kind of interesting because i would say that most of the communities that i visit are are very hung up on the no you got to be in state of, of you know akin to sleep and you know you got to do it 30 minutes before you go to sleep and you're like okay what's working for successful people let's uh, I want to focus on that. I, I don't, you know, I don't want to read Neville to death. I don't think Neville wanted us to <laughs> fine tooth comb him. And then like, you know, people get a little obsessive about it, but anyways, I digress. Yeah. yeah. Before I forget, and I, I want to, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I want to get back to the energy part of the, yeah. my query. How do you notice? So let's say you're going into a room now that you know, you know about this, you've been practicing this for years and you, you're in a great place. How do you think that you show up like, energetically around people, um, whether you know them or not, versus maybe when you were a bit more of a, fr like, you know, a bit, bit more of a difficult place? Like, do you think mm. people can sense how clear you are? Like, how does your energy show up in, in you know, certain situations? How does that change? Yeah, I think, yes, I think it's felt differently. Your people respond to you better. But, and I think people are more drawn to you. But I think, too, when you're in a better state, you notice other people more when you're not in a good state. You're so preoccupied with your own self. You don't notice other people. You see them, but you don't really, your, your powers of observation aren't that because you're so worried about, Oh, do I look okay in this? And, Oh, maybe, you know, I don't know. I, I, I hope I can have a good conversation with someone. I'm not feeling really comfortable about you. are So obsessed in your own head with what you've got going on. You walk into a room, and you're, it's like you don't even notice what's in the room because you're so preoccupied with your own self. I think that over time, the better state you get into mentally and emotionally, right. I think the more you can be really aware of other people and see them and see what's going on. And, and you can, you know, sometimes you might walk in and go, oh, that person's energy really repels me. I'm walking over this way. You know, yeah. especially if people are really you know, you feel that they're really angry or hostile or they're really drunk or they're, you know, whatever. There's certain things that'll just repel you. So that's really good. So you're, you're saying that when you do this work, you go into rooms and you're able to, um, you're able to be there for people. You'll be able to be present for people. And you know, that is mm. so wonderful. I mean, I think part of the reason we have struggles with relationships is even in the time we do spend together, we're not fully there. We're not enjoying it. We're not able to see what that other person is saying because of our own crap. Yes. Um, so I do, the benefits are really endless for mm. um, doing this work. Um, cause I was going to ask you, cause I find that when I go into a room, so I'll be doing affirmations and meditations. And then when I go into a room, like the automatic thoughts come in, you know, mm. this person, blah, 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 blah. and I noticed that I didn't realize I was doing this. So I would do all this affirmation, but I would contradict myself right away <laughs> when I go, Go into the world you know yeah, yeah. so I've had to I guess with practice it comes but in the moment like what I like to do is try to be neutral or better I, I try do not like to be in a negative state if I am then I get myself out of there um and I try to drink water and like get myself out of there but mm. now in social situations I have way more fun now because I've I can be more present mm. and my energy is I wouldn't say I'm 100% there but because I do notice that people 
can still feel me and are a little bit frazzled right away when they get to, when they meet me. But yeah. now I can make better friends. Um, I have better conversations with people because, you know, I've done, I'm doing more of the work that, you know, makes me feel confident around those people when I'm mm. not there. Mm. So, um, I, I, by the way, I had a question for you around, um, crisis. You, you did, you do have a package, I guess, or like a meditation, um, course around, um, crisis, right? Mm. Uh, do you still have? I do. Yeah. And so, and, and I, 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 you don't really push stuff. So like, I haven't heard of, of that in a while, but like, how can you, can you, can you share any, if you can, like any successes or any um, lessons that people can get from, if they're in a crisis, like taking that on, like, is that, how does that work for people? Like, is this a six day course or something like that? Well, no, it's four, it's four sessions, but it's when there's some of the, someone's in the middle of a crisis, it's your helping them to calm down and you're helping them to because when you're in a crisis it affects your food eating sleeping your mental state trying to get to work all that stuff so it's about really getting to the place where you are able to take care of your physical body you take care of your mental state you take care of calming yourself down so the course really revolves around helping people set those things in place so that they are able then to go back to whatever crisis they're in with a much more peaceful calm state of being to be able to handle it better okay so and often it will pass once you're emotionally in a better state your influence is much greater in a positive way, which means then the thing can dissipate and disintegrate a lot more quickly, I think. That's true. So, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that, like, I think a lot of people are in emotional crises without knowing it. They're, they've been in that horrible state for a very long time. So, yeah. um, and I think, you know, the, the fact that it's all about calming down and getting to the basics, it really escapes us. We think there's going to be this masterful plan that we need to do, but. Mm. But yeah, um, yeah, I appreciate the conversation today. I I always love hearing from you. I really love you know all the interviews that you do, um, yeah. and it's nice to hear like all the different perspectives from from you know from everyday people uh, that have, whose lives have been changed. So mm. um, and lives have been impacted, and yeah. you know who the real life situations improve for them. So I I really appreciate your time. And uh, this was a little more rambly and random, but. <laughs> That's all right. That's how most of my interviews are, Sonia. <laughs> yeah, you, you just keep those questions. You're so good at this. Like, I had, a, I thought I would be able to have some notes and yeah. be able to ask. But um, I think, I think what ends up happening is that when people hear any interview or any sto- success story or anything like that, it just gives them little nuggets to chew on, yeah. in a better, state, and you know, they, then they can move forward with their day. And like, I like yeah. to listen to you and your channel, like and other similar channels every morning, you know, just yeah. to get myself in a beautiful place. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's the great thing about YouTube is you can get on and you can listen to something and you were not in a good emotional state and you go, wow, that's so uplifting or that just made me feel better. And you get your sort of mojo back for the day or for an hour and then you crash and burn again. Then you listen to something again. So we constantly need inspiration or listening to things that we relate to. And I think, that's the reason why I so loved reading Neville's Law and the Promise because it was real people's stories. And I think that's why I've done a lot of interviews and reading success stories because they're real people's stories. You can't argue with, you know, you can argue with a book's knowledge or whatever, but you can't argue with someone's experience because it's theirs. So right. I think it's like people's experiences can teach you without it being you're the teacher, I'm the student. You're learning yes. from someone who's just a regular everyday person just like you. So you go, well, hang on. Well, if they can do it, I can try and apply the mechanics of what, what, of what they used to create their result. I can do the same. So it makes it more reachable for you. Yes, it does. There's certain stories that I go back to over and yeah. over again. I need to, you know, I need to give myself that faith and that boost. I think a lot of people probably relate to that as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, again, want to thank you. And, you know, is there anything upcoming, like any exciting, uh, new programs that you're releasing or launching or anything like that? Nothing that I can tell you about yet. Cause they're in the hatching stage, but 
it will be things will be revealed you know as as i coach things come to the forefront as to what needs to be created next and yeah you know, there's always you know there's always yeah. going to be more neville youtubes there's always going to be introducing this year i want to introduce some other authors that i've read yeah. that have really helped me i mean i've always loved neville and i'll continue with that but there is now so many more that I would like to share the, yeah. the knowledge that, that has helped me and also continuing to share storytelling, you know, storytelling time. I think that is just that I love that. I learn a lot from it when I'm sharing and interviewing people, mm. you find out how someone did something slightly differently and you think, wow, I never thought of that. So I yeah. think always that is, is a great source of free advice, free, free right. information. So, and I do think that it's good, you know, because some countries can't afford certain things that you make a lot of stuff available for free so everybody can have access. I think that's important. Very true. And I, I think you have some great free courses too. Like the, um, some of the what the things that you've done with the self love, like those are fantastic, amazing resources. So I, I just wanted to remind people that you have these type of courses. Yeah. Um, like, well, actually, well, I'll put the the link to the free courses down below because I do know a lot of people hop on the channel every day, so we can put the link down. And there is um, a long distance relationship free course. There's how to attract yeah. a wonderful relationship course. And the third one is how to attract your person, a six part course. So yeah, thanks for reminding me because I forget, yeah. I forget they're there. So no, I know you do so much. And I, I, I think that those courses are a great place to start because you know, yes. it was funny. I was thinking, wow, I'm an intermediate manifester now. Like, yeah. Really then a month later, I'm like, what? I don't remember any of my, <laughs> any of my lessons. <laughs> What do you, what, I have to start all over again. Cause yeah. if you don't practice it, you lose it. Right. You um, You're only as good as today. You're only as good is, as today. <laughs> and, um, in a way it's kind of exciting. Like you, you, once you know this stuff, you're kind of like, Whoa, I mean, uh, if all this is my creation, it's, it's exciting to see what'll come up rather than, yeah. Oh my God, I'm future. You're like, this is a cool adventure that I'm helping to create, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I am going to do your uh i think you have, do you have a free self-love course i thought you did no i don't think no no i don't oh. the self-love course is a paid course but the three the three i mentioned are free okay so mm. i will definitely be using that um i'm really bad at wrapping up interviews so i'm just gonna <laughs> say it again. um and have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day Thank and you. i'm really excited to read any comments i'm going to send you um a little email uh, that people can email me if they want yep. to, because there's, Great. you know, there's just a lot that I'm doing that I, I might be able to, um, yeah, I'd like to chat with people about. So sounds good. Lovely. And anything we talked about, I'll put the links down below for people to follow through on anything we discussed. So yeah. Okay, amazing. Have a great one. All Bye. right.